You're in the water loop. <laughs> Waterloop is made possible in part by grants from Springpoint Partners and the Walton Family Foundation. Waterloop. Hi, this is Travis with Waterloop. Water conservation is very important to me. I bet it is to many of you as well. That's why I have high Sierra showerheads in my house, and I'm really happy that they're a supporter of this podcast. They carry the EPA WaterSense label for efficiency, and they use 40% less water than conventional low-flow showerheads. The model I use runs at only a gallon and a half per minute. And because of their unique nozzle design patented that nobody else has, it maximizes efficiency of water and energy, but doesn't compromise on performance. You still get a very strong shower. Use promo code LOOP20 for 20% off at HighSierraShowerHeads.com. You're in the water loop. Welcome to Water Loop. This is Travis. Joined for this episode by Tara Moran. She is president and CEO of the California Water Data Consortium. Tara, I'm excited for this conversation. Happy to be here. Thank you, Travis. I was saying before uh, we started recording that a lot of my most popular episodes have been about data and the internet of water, and all this kind of info management stuff. So it's obviously a a really hot issue that a lot of people are interested in. Um, So I think this will be a popular episode for sure. What was the problem with water data in California that kind of led to the creation of of the consortium? Yeah, so um, we are the California Water Data Consortium, and we obviously care immensely about water data here, both in California and beyond. But I just want to be really clear that we care about data and access to high-quality data that can be shared and integrated across regions that results in better, but with the idea that that will result in better, more sustainable water management outcomes for all Californians. And that really is the goal and what motivates and why I think people understand that data is so important is because it really has the power to change people's lives in really important ways, particularly when we're talking about things like water data and ecological data. And so let me back up just a little bit um, before I talk about what motivated, I'll talk a little bit about what motivated the formation of the California Water Data Consortium before I talk about some of the the data issues that are fundamental that we're trying to tackle. Um, So from 2012 to 2016, California had a severe and historic drought that required state and local agencies to make decisions about where water use needed to be cut back. And while they were grappling with those decisions, um, it really became clear that both state and local agencies did not have the information that they needed to make well-informed decisions about where those cutbacks or conservation measures should take place and how successful they were when they actually happened. And so the, the real challenge is, or the real issue is that we live in a state with a thriving technology sector. It's home to the fifth largest economy in the world. And yet we lack basic information about how much water is being used for what purpose and at what time. And even when agencies report those data to the state, there are often uh, data quality issues that can render them either unusable or or really hinder their their long-term usability. Um, or when they are reported, it's often once or twice a year. And so they certainly aren't available to make these sort of real-time critical management decisions that I talked about previously, um, when you know species or communities are, are really at risk. Additionally, there are many, um, many of the data that are reported to the state are reported in slightly different formats at different time frames using slightly different nomenclatures, which can make integrating them across regions very challenging. So it's hard to get these broader perspectives that are actually required when we think about trying to make sort of regional water management decisions or statewide mo- water management decisions. Um, And all of this ultimately impedes our ability to to manage creatively across geographies, to manage resiliently, uh, particularly during these dry periods. And and we all know that climate change is going to tax our already taxed water system uh, with more frequent and longer dry periods, 
earlier spring runoff that can has the potential to lead to increased flooding. Um, a, 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 also in association with higher, more intense rainfall periods. Um, so we need to really have a more comprehensive understanding of our water management system that will enable us to make more proactive decisions than sort of the, the reactive way that we've been managing to this point in time. And, and to be frank, we're, we're heading into another dry summer right now here in California. And so we're all, I think, acutely aware of the need to improve how we've managed during these dry periods in the past to protect species, communities, um, and individuals at, at risk of, you know, in access, uh, access uh, to, to safe and affordable drinking water, as well as species who are critically endangered and really suffering during these dry periods. And, mm -hmm. and uh, growers and, and the communities that they support, as well as the urban centers who, um, you know, really enacted very, very uh, robust conservation measures during the last drought. Um, but we really need to have better information about how successful all of those programs uh, fit together. And I guess you kind of alluded to this, the, the size of California, the diversity of California, these are challenges as well when it comes to that data management, right? You have a lot of different types of water resources. And then given the size of the state, there's all these different water districts and boards and agencies. And so all of that complicates the picture, huh? Absolutely. And I mean, you'll hear that time and again in California is um, there's, you know, there's a whole host of different jurisdictional. So there's a lot of fragmentation that occurs in water management in California and, and a lot of different geographies as well. And, and each water management system is unique. They have their own systems. They have their own way of managing. They have their own local context that really needs to be part of the equation as we think about all of this. And again, it leads back to why having data and information to really manage across that spectrum is so important. So how was the, the California Water Data Consortium created? It's kind of a, a unique, uh, unique occurrence here and really interesting approach. I'd uh, love to, to hear that story. Yeah. Yeah. So in 2016, sort of at the height of this most recent drought that I was just talking about, I mentioned that it became clear that California really needed to do something to address the many data challenges that, that I talked about previously and to make data more accessible at local, regional and statewide scales to better support water management decisions and to make those data more accessible to the public and, and to the many um many sectors involved in, in water management decisions here in California. So in 2016, the California legislature passed what's called the Open and Transparent Water Data Act. And it's one of the most robust pieces of legislation of, of water data legislation in the US and globally. And what it does is it requires state agencies to make existing water and ecological uh, publicly available, uh, make those data sets publicly available on open data platforms and to update them quarterly. Similarly, it requires um, water and ecological data sets related to California water supply that are held by federal agencies available on these platforms and, and then to update them quarterly. However, um, as they were drafting this legislation, there was a re realization that the state could meet the legislative mandates as laid out, as I just laid out, without um, actually meeting sort of the broader legislative goals of making sure that the data were actually useful, they were sufficient to make well-informed water management decisions, and that they were broadly accessible. And so the legislators understood that achieving these goals would actually require ongoing collaboration and dialogue both between state agencies and non-state agency representatives. Um, including, um, you know, water agencies, tribes, academia, uh, the private sector, NGOs, and others. And so what they did is, and for them to really get together and have ongoing dialogue and opportunities for projects to really try and make informed decisions that would benefit all of these different, different groups. And so the bill ended up including a clause that allowed the Department of Water Resources to partner with a nonprofit organization to create operate and maintain the data platform. And that really is the genesis of the California Water Data Consortium. 
And so we were formed as that nonprofit organization to bring together state and non-state agency representatives to jointly make decisions about how water data in California should should be governed. Hmm. I'm really curious about then what the work is. So they, they created this consortium to be the, the center center point here. Um, how how's the work conducted? What does the consortium then do? Yeah. So um, why don't I talk a little bit more, just uh, I'll talk just slightly yeah. a little bit more about our governance structure. And then I'll talk about, I'll give just a few examples of some of the pilot projects that we're, that we're doing that to really demonstrate the value of open and transparent water data. And then um, we can talk sure. maybe a little bit more later about yeah. some of those specifically. Yeah, because I know um, that the I know that the board uh, of of the consortium is a really diverse group, uh, and that that's very interesting, and I think tells a lot about the mission and the work and and where it resides. So, go ahead with the the governance. Sure. Yeah. So the idea of this uh, ongoing partnership and dialogue between state and non state agency representatives is really at the heart of the consortium. And to facilitate this dynamic, we have this somewhat uh, complex governance structure. Uh, which was developed and includes a nine member board that, as you said, represents a diverse, uh, a diversity of interests and they oversee sort of the, the strategic operations and core operations of the consortium. And it's complemented by an 11 member steering committee that includes six state agency representatives and five non-state agency representatives, again, across a variety of different interest groups. And they oversee the consortium's programmatic work. And so um, our programmatic work <laughs> then develops through two working groups, one technical working group and one data users working group that jointly advance pilot projects to address sort of key water management opportunities. Um, so right now we have four pilot projects that we're advancing. And I'll just touch briefly on each of them. And then if you want to talk in more detail about any of them, I'm happy to, to fill in some gaps as well. Sure. So, so the first is a partnership with the Department of Conservation to identify critical gaps in LIDAR coverage in California. And for those who may not be familiar, LIDAR is a remote sensing method that provides high resolution information about the Earth's surface. And if you image through time, you can get a sense of how things are changing. And it has a whole host of applications from estimating the amount of runoff from seasonal snowpack to um, understanding changes in infrastructure to identifying areas at risk of landslide after wildfire. So it's an amazing set of data that you can use to do a whole host of, of to uh, you know, understand a whole host of different applications once you've collected it, but it's very expensive to collect. And so the goal with this pilot project is to bring together federal, state, and local agencies to, in a collaborative effort, to pool resources and consider data sharing models to support ongoing statewide LIDAR data collection. The second pilot project focuses on groundwater data, and there's really two components to this work. The first is working with the Department of Water Resources and the state board to collect or to develop, to sort of jointly or co-develop groundwater data, groundwater elevation data, uh, best management practices that state and local agencies could adopt. And once developed, these data standards would facilitate data sharing across uh, local agencies and, and state agencies, as well as between regulatory programs, um, which will ultimately save you know, both state and local agencies a lot of time and money as they report and integrate these data through time. Uh, the second component to that one is a collaboration between the consortium and the Environmental Defense Fund who have been working with this, working with a technology firm and a local water management agency to develop a, ground, or a water accounting and trading platform. And so the goal is to take that existing open source platform, expand and scale it to be available um, as a voluntary platform for water managers to use to um, easily sort of track um, track water use across their basin and make decisions about how they can sort of achieve long-term sustainability there. The third is uh, focused on urban water management um, and local agencies, local urban water management agencies 
report a whole host of different data to the state. It often has some similarities, but the format in which it's reported and the timeframes across which it's reported uh, vary quite broadly. And so part of the work we're doing here is to dig into those reports and see where the opportunities to either um, look for ways to streamline how that data can be reported um, and made available uh, in a more standardized format, again, to facilitate sharing across um, both local and state agencies. And then the final one is working with the Delta Measurement Experimentation Consortium to develop a Delta Alternative Compliance Plan for measuring and reporting water use under uh, state statutes that require that all surface water or nearly all surface water diversions be accurately measured and reported to the state annually. Um, and this has been uh, an ongoing challenge in, for those who are familiar with uh, California San Joaquin Delta, um, getting accurate uh, estimates of water usage there has been particularly challenging. And so this, in this partnership, it's um, the Delta Measurement Experimentation Consortium, the California Water Data Consortium, and OpenET, which is a relatively new web-based platform that uses publicly available data and open source models to provide uh, satellite-based information on evapotranspiration, and uh, as well as a partnership with the State Water Resources Control Board to develop a software bridge, essentially, for lack of a better term, to, to integrate information from the State Board's water rights information with field estimates, field level estimates of crop evapotranspiration to estimate crop water use and report that information to the state. And so the goal with this one is really to streamline reporting of accurate and timely information um, in, to the state in a region where getting those accurate estimates um, in the past of water use has been particularly challenging. Yeah. Um, so that's just a sort of a broad overview of some of the work that we're, that we're doing. Well, I mean, that's, uh, you say pilot projects, but those are four huge, important buckets of water data and topics for, for California, right? Groundwater, such a critical issue, the, the urban water situation, what's happening in the Delta, um, being able to get a better understanding of, of situations with LIDAR. So yeah, you, you have your hands full already there with those, those four, I'd say. Um, and I guess transparency is a big part of all of this. That's, that was the point. Uh, so all the work that you're doing, the things that's happening with these pilots, uh, the results, the information's being kind of put up there and for anyone to be able to see as, as it goes along. That's exactly right. So, um, because we're, you know, we evolved out of the open and transparent water data act, everything that we're doing has to comply and, and the data that are being collected. Again, it's, it's all data that's being reported publicly already to state agencies, but part of what we're doing is ensuring that that is then available on these open data platforms that were developed under the Open and Transparent Water Data Act. So yes, absolutely, it's a huge component. Sure. So are there other efforts around the country that are somewhat similar or I know that other states may be trying to, to clean up their data, if you will, or different organizations looking to deal with data. Just curious as, as kind of what else you see on the, the U.S. landscape when it comes to water data and what you might be looking at and, and you know, monitoring, if you will. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there are certainly ongoing efforts uh, across the state, and we're seeing these evolve through time. Um, so a good example would be that we're currently, uh, the New Mexico um, is, a, is a great example of a very similar structure. And I think you actually had um, Stacey Timmons on uh, speaking previously about uh, the Water Data Act that was passed in New Mexico and some of the, the data work that they're doing there. But what they have done is establish a fairly similar model, but that that is still overseen within the state government. So I think what is particularly unique about our model is that it's an entirely separate organization that partners very, very closely with state agencies, um, but it's, it's a different organization and an entirely separate organization that provides a venue, a separate sort of objective venue for stakeholders and the public to really weigh in on water governance uh, systems in the state. Um, 
other, but we're seeing a lot of other efforts like this. So the Western, um, the Western States Water Council, uh, I think I got that acronym wrong, so sorry <laughs> about that. Um, but they have developed the Water Data Exchange, um, which has really done a lot of fantastic work to pull together water data across the 17, 17 Western states and make those data transparent. The Internet of Water with Peter, Peter Callahan is another effort that is just, um, you know, really bringing water data to the fore and really thinking about how do we ensure that these data are accessible for people to make good decisions about this essential public resource. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's interesting to see all those efforts kind of take, take shape and take place. Um, and it makes sense that like, you know, the Western states a water council that they work on something regionally because water doesn't really know boundary, you know, political boundaries, right? It's going to flow state to state, watershed to watershed, and people making decisions about that water management need to have a have a holistic view of what's going on. Um, Absolutely. Uh, you, you know, you mentioned the nonprofit status. So, how are you funded then? <laughs> <laughs> it's always yeah. Fund, yeah. Funding, financing um, money is always an important, an important question. How do these things get paid for? Yeah. So let me, let me, you kind of ask two questions in there. Okay. So let me start with why is the non nonprofit status important? Mm -hmm. um, because I think that's a really critical question. And then let's, let's transition to the funding sure. piece. So it might be easier for me to, to answer the, why is the nonprofit status important? Uh, easier to answer that with a question or with a response about what the consortium isn't. And, and so importantly, the consortium is not a regulatory entity and nor do we have taxing authority. And this is really by design. When the consortium was originally envisioned, um, there was a water data advisory council that did a lot of thinking about, um, about the organization, its goals, its governance structures. And, and they identified two key reasons for developing an independent nonprofit organization. Um, firstly, they, they recognize that the consortium would need to be nimble and flexible and able to adapt to new opportunities as they arise. The second piece is that they realized for the consortium's long-term success um, that it would rely on its ability to establish and, and serve as this neutral space that could bring together state and non-state agency representatives to work together and not be vested to a single interest group. And, and so the decision was made to incorporate as a nonprofit organization that would serve um, or that would derive funding from a variety of sources rather than being beholden to uh, a single sector or, or interest group. Um, so I, I'm hoping that answers the first portion of the question as to why our nonprofit status is important. Um, and then I'll transition to talk a little bit about um, how we are actually funded. So the consortium has received uh, generous financial support from both philanthropy through the SD Bechtel Junior Foundation, as well as the Water Foundation. Um, we've also received funding from several urban water management districts, our urban water districts and irrigation districts in California's Central Valley. So this includes Metropolitan Water District, uh, Rosedale Rio Bravo Water Storage District in Kern County in uh, California Central Valley, uh, Molten Nagal Water District, um, as well as members of the Bay Area Agency or Bay Area Agencies Coalition, um, and ultimately they have made these donations because they recognize uh, the potential benefits of streamlined reporting, as well as better just you know the benefits of statewide data to better support water management decisions within their, their local agencies. Um, and, and from a f philanthropic standpoint, they really want to see um, improved access and see the value of open and transparent water data to inform broader um, water management in California across the across the state. And so we are actively working now. So that's sort of initial like startup funding that we've gotten and we're working now uh, to really build out a sustainable funding model that will be a mix of, of a variety across a variety of funding streams from urban and agricultural water districts, philanthropy, the state, 
private sector um, as well as grants. Um, we're also soliciting grants so or, or donations, and you can donate on our website. So I'll put a shameless plug in for that. But um, it's California Water or CAWaterData.org. Um, so, so that's something that we spend quite a bit of time working on right now is really building out this more sustainable funding model long term. Sure, absolutely. I'm curious, it's a pretty new entity, right? Just kind of mm -hmm. set up a few years ago. Uh, you've right. had to do a lot of a lot of kind of initial work and setting things up, launching these pilots. Um, I don't think your work will ever be done, right? This data always has to be managed. But are you, um, where are you on that that journey of of getting things going and getting to a point where, okay, we have our arms around the data now. People can see the data. Things are flowing pretty well. Um, I guess is that kind of the the goal is to get to that that state. Um, and and where are you on that journey? Yeah, so the, the consortium was formed in 2019, and I came on um, last year, so 2020. Um, and, you know, I, I think the consortium is in its infancy. And I think California has a lot of, I think California and, and really uh, statewide, or sorry, uh, across the US, we have a lot of work to do um, in terms of really understanding and valuing water as the essential resource that it is. Um, but at the same time, I am so encouraged by the interest, the willingness, and the value that people really see. And there has been just a dramatic shift in the past five years in how we think about and value water and, and the data necessary to manage it sustainably. Um, so I guess my long-term vision for the consortium would be sort of a resilient and equitable water future for all Californians, where all Californians, where trusted, open, and accessible water and ecological ecological data are used to inform all water management decisions across the state. So we do have a long way to go to get to that vision. But just the fact that we are, are seeing so much interest and in so many agencies willing to come together and start to have conversations to achieve that long-term vision um, is just really encouraging. And I think we, we are already on that track here. So That's awesome. Good stuff. Well, uh, I would love to follow up with you in the future on on these specific pilots and kind of hear about the outcomes and the you know the real world application of of some of this data management. Uh, it's exciting stuff, really important. Um, and I'm you know being on the East Coast here, I'm thinking of all you in California. I've seen the news about the predictions for the dry summer and uh, the water supplies, and know that you know it's going to be uh, conservation and efficiency are going to be really critical uh, in the in the months ahead for y'all but tara thank you for your time and for all this information appreciate it so much yeah thank you so much travis it's been uh, a pleasure Waterloop, Waterloop. thanks everyone for listening to today's episode a special thanks to waterloop supporters spring point partners and the walton family foundation the waterloop podcast is sponsored by high sierra showerheads the smart stylish way to save energy water and money while enjoying a powerful shower. Save 20% with promo code Waterloop at HighSierraShowerheads.com. If you like Waterloop, please subscribe to the YouTube channel or your favorite podcast platform. Follow us on social media and visit Waterloop.org to sign up for updates. Waterloop, Waterloop, Waterloop. Waterloop, Waterloop, Waterloop.